Hello mate and welcome back to Get Rendering, the rendering show that is designed to get you up and running with Dash Studio as quickly as is humanly possible. As you probably remember in our last episode what we did was we worked on a little bit of lighting and composition and in this episode we're going to actually look at adding content into our content library and then manipulating it within our scene. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon that really helps me out and of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. So let's jump into this then. As you can see, what I've currently got on my screen is one of the windows called the content library, which is gonna be your default way of interacting with the scenes within your content library, i.e. the content that you have created or purchased from the Daz Studio store. Now, there are two ways that you can add the content to your library. You can either use Daz Central, the app which comes with Daz Studio, or you can do it manually, which is really the only way that actually works every single time. So, before we go any further with the Daz Studio side of things, what we need to do is work with our file system. As you can see here, I've got my current content library uh, on open in front of you here and what I have is a folder on my D drive which is not my main hard drive because it's got more space on it where I've got DAS, DAS 3D Studio and then my library. What you can actually do though is create a folder on any of your drives that you so choose and when you come to your content library tab if you right click on here it says add a base directory and you click on that it gives you the opportunity to choose your own base directory which is the place where you're going to put your files and folders. When you get any product from the studio store you have the opportunity to download the zip file from the Dash studio store which allows you to install it manually into that directory. Now, what you have to do is you have to open the zip file and then inside the zip file, there'll be two XML files and then a folder called contents. The contents of the contents folder is what you need to copy into your base directory. So don't copy the contents folder itself. Don't copy the XML files. Just copy the contents of the contents folder into your base directory and then it will show up in Dash Studio. Now, on top of doing that, there is the smart content window, which we'll go through in a few moments. But before you can actually use that, what you have to do is you have to manually update your metadata. So what you can do is right click on the top of the contents tab and then where it says content DB maintenance, select that. And then you're going to have a dialog window choose. What you want to do is select process metadata queue and re-import metadata and hit accept. Then you will get another dialog which you can just hit accept on and then Dash Studio will spend, depending on how much content you have to add, a certain amount of time to update your smart content, i.e. to import all of the metadata from the products that you've added. This can, in some cases, take 10, 15, 20 minutes if you have a really huge content data library. So just bear in mind that it's not quick, but it is the best way of doing it because it makes sure that your products are actually added to the smart content, whereas Daz Central is somewhat unreliable in this instance. Now you might also notice that at the bottom of this dialog window there's also an option to reset database. So you can do that if you have content that you've removed but is still showing up in your metadata or in your content library. That's because the metadata still exists. So even though the files aren't there, Dash Studio will still show the products. So if you want to remove those, just hit reset database, hit accept, and then it will completely wipe the database and then start again. However, again, this does take an amount of time. So you wouldn't want to do this every single time. This is something that you should probably do maybe every two or three months as a maintenance thing, but certainly don't want to do it constantly. So on average, as I was saying, it takes somewhere in the region of about 10 minutes for me. Um, it's not ideal, but it's free software. So what are you gonna do? So once you've installed that content and it's been added to your database, the first place you can find it, of course, is within the content library. And if you see, if you expand the My Library tab in the 
content library, what you can see is a file directory not entirely dissimilar from the one in the folder that I just showed you. And as you can see, it basically replicates that structure. And if I open one of the folders, you can see that the content that you're adding is added in this window here if it's openable by Dash Studio in big square icons. So that's how you add that content there. When we move over to our smart content directory, what you can see is that everything is categorized into different sections. So you've got accessories, you've got anatomy for characters, you've got cameras, you've got environments, figures. Figures is where all your characters exist. And what you have down at the bottom here is a click button that says filter by context. What that enables is that when you select an item within your scene tab, which is this box in the top right hand corner, if you remember from our previous episodes, once you've got an item selected, it will only show you items that are compatible with the item you have selected. So for example, if I have Genesis 8 female selected, it will only show me characters, clothing, props, etc., that will work with that specific character. It is quite useful, but again, it is not completely foolproof. The makers of content on the Dash Studio library or the marketplace do not always add all the metadata that is necessary. So sometimes you will install a brand new product and you'll select the character that you think it's for and it will not appear in your smart content and you have to go and find it manually. Unfortunately, that is just the nature of the beast. So I'm going to go into my figures and I'm going to quickly open up Genesis 8 basic female as a character. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure that I am in smooth shaded so that we don't see any CG nippleage because YouTube is YouTube. And what you can see is now that I've double clicked on an asset in my content library, my smart content library, it's now loading into the scene like so. And again, this may or may not take a while. Unfortunately, at our studio being free software, it is not perfect but it does what it's meant to do. But it can take time dependent on how many morphs and characters you have installed into your content library. So you will have to be patient. Adding multiple characters obviously compounds the issue, but it is what it is. So for you, that probably only took a couple of seconds, but in real time, that took almost five minutes just to load one character in the scene. So again, this is not a slating Dash Studio session. However, just be aware that nothing is going to happen quickly. Be patient, take your time and pay attention to detail. So as you can now see, we've got Genesis 8 female loaded into our scene. And when I have it selected, what we now have in our content library, our smart content library is a selection of tabs or categories that relate to this character and we can apply different characters to the Genesis 8 female form those that are based on the Genesis 8 female base figure i.e. the base geometry there are character sliders that will simply change the shape however there are characters uh, presets that not only change the shape but they also apply the skin textures to the character as well this character has her own default skin textures but you can't see them because i am in smooth shaded and the reason i'm in smooth shaded is because in fully textured mode you can see the nips and the moo moo which obviously we don't want to see so there's that now then what you can see is when i select the character or rather when i hover the mouse over the character different parts of her become highlighted in yellow with little box around them when I click on them. What that means is that I can select the different bones. If I move into the move tool, if I select a different bone, what's going to happen is the widget is going to appear at that bone and the properties tab is going to switch to the transforms that I can apply to that specific bone. The Daz Studio characters are all pre-rigged so that we can move them around and pose them as we see fit. So for example, if I change the bend of this arm, you can see the arm bends backwards and forwards and the default of course is zero which you can just type in by clicking on the number typing in the number what you can also do is use these plus and minus symbols either side of the slider to move them uh, dependent on which bone you're moving and what the presets are you can move them by smaller increments to make it a little easier to control this isn't the only way to pose, of course, there is the power pose tool, which we'll go into uh, probably later on in this video. But for now, uh, we're looking at the options that we can do. We can also use this 
object here in the top left hand corner to rotate the bones as we see fit like that it's a little harder to use because it is not that intuitive but as you can see it's uh there's certainly a one way of moving things around if you're unhappy with something that you've just done press ctrl and z and then after a few seconds the bone will snap back into place if you've gone 20 or 30 steps down the line and realized that you're unhappy with everything that you've done what you can do select the whole character in the scene and then down here it's a little hard to see because her legs in the way there's a little icon like this if you click on that and then you can go to restore figure pose and then it'll take a little while and but it will reset every single bone and joint within the character back to the a pose that we saw her in a few moments ago and of course dad studio being dad studio that takes a period of time as well <laughs> there's no such thing as a quick operation in dad studio unfortunately um but you know it is what it is so yeah took a moment to get there but we got there and as you can see the character is now posed back in the a pose that she started in so the first realistic way of posing the character is to use the posing pane which is accessible in the windows panes and tabs and as you come down you can see posing just there and you can open that up now what we can see at the moment is that because i have genesis 8 female selected herself anything that i do here is going to for example if i do y rotate you can see that she rotates around the y axis but we don't want to do that we're not going to use sliders in this particular context what we're going to do though is we're going to go to pose controls in this options here and as you can see now we have a number of options that we can choose for example if we go to head we can open the head and then we can open up the brow and then we can actually move these sliders around to change things that are happening on her forehead if we zoom right in there we go and then we can do what we call the brow compression and that gives us that uh, slight lines between the the eyebrows there that indicate that she's concentrating very hard or is annoyed or something like that and there are controls for various different parts of the body so you can do it that way if you want to control each individual part of the body with a specific move what you can also do is use this tool which is called the power pose tool and what you can do is so if i just were to reset my camera view again back to this view and then i come in here if i now select this bone here i can actually slide it around forwards and backwards by selecting that and i can also do the same thing for this one and this just allows you to very quickly control the position of the different bones by sliding around up down left and right do the same thing with the head you can do the thing with the neck you can do it with the top of the head and that's another way you can do it but you can also control the hands with fine control by clicking on that icon there or if you want to you can actually control every aspect of the head as well so you can move an eyebrow up and an eyebrow down you can move the eye to the left and an eye to the right you can make them look really wacky and weird um so those are your main posing tools obviously if you're in a hurry then what you can do is you can download pose packs from the das studio store what i would strongly recommend though is that if you're going to do that what you need to do is be very clear that every pose within that pack is different from ones that you previously bought because unfortunately what Das Studio Store doesn't do is check these pose packs for duplicates so what you'll find is that the content creators will maybe have four or five different poses and then they'll have a whole bunch of the same ones that they've used over and over again to pad the packs out and to make them look different and of course as you as the consumer will find that's really quite ir irritating because what happens is you're paying 20 30 bucks and you're only getting two or three poses and of course this option here allows you to really take fine control over the movement of the bones of the eye so i've got that wacky eye movement there at the moment i can move that around and you can move really really a whole bunch of stuff on the face to set up your custom poses and get your characters looking exactly as you want them to uh, entirely up to you how you do that now if you're in a situation where you've messed up the face with uh, a whole bunch of posing like i've just done there what you can do is select the head 
and you can go to restore selected item pose and that will replace the pose of the head items rather than the whole body. It's a slightly quicker and I do mean only very slightly quicker way of resetting parts of the body rather than having to reset the entire body but as you can see Death Studio is still now having a bit of a think about it and it's still going to take a period of time to achieve so again don't expect things to be incredibly quick because they just won't be another thing that is worth knowing is that bones have a hierarchy so in every Death Studio character the hip bone is the foundation upon everything else which is built so you have the hip bone and then the legs extend from that the lower legs and then from the lower legs it goes into the feet and the metatarsals and what we have in the upper body is it goes through the abdomen up the spine to the pectorals and then from the pectorals to the collarbone from the collarbone out to the arms and from the collarbone also up the neck to the head bone and then within the head bone as you can see on the right hand side of the screen you have the lower jaw and then the upper face rig and the eyes so you can pose everything using the scene tab by just climbing up the hierarchy and finding the bone that you're looking for and then if we have the hip bone selected as you can see that is dead center in the uh, character and then when we have genesis 8 female selected you can see that the parent node her axis is zero zero directly between her feet and perfectly central to her body so there we go that's everything that you need to know right now about posing characters as i said you can apply poses from your content library um, that's as simple as double clicking on the pose that you want to use and in some cases pose packs have partials i.e they will have poses that are set up for the lower and upper bodies separately so that you can mix and match pieces of poses and things like that and then all you have to do is tweak the fine details tweak the little bits and pieces of the character that may be clipping through clothing or objects within the scene now one last thing that i haven't shown you yet that you can do is you can actually click on a subject in the scene and you can drag so it does take time but as you can see i can actually click on the hand and i can drag it and if I wanted to do the same thing with a foot, I can click and drag the foot. But what you'll notice is that there are limits to the positions that you can actually put the bones into, which um, force the character to ragdoll like an actual skeleton. So there are limitations that we have to follow. And if we go too far, what you'll find is that the character will ragdoll in the direction that you're pulling. This really isn't a very good way of posing, but it can get you out of a pinch every now and again and get you into some really bizarre and unique poses such as we have here. It's just really random. She's probably falling over or whatever. And you can also get expressions, which are just poses for the face. So sometimes the vendors will dress them up like they're something a lot more complex than that, but they are just poses for all of these joints that you'll see here and it's really not difficult to create your own however having said that creating realistic ones does take a little bit of finesse so it's not me saying that buying expressions isn't worth it it's just that again when you're buying these packs make sure that you're buying expressions that are actually different from each other um, rather than paying 20 bucks for one facial expression okay that about covers it for this episode guys thank you very much for watching i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below i'm sure you will and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye